How is Madden a fighting game? There quite obviously isn't any fighting. I mean, this game's a fighting game, but in actuality, it doesn't matter. The point of this video isn't to argue about why a game about hitting people should go into a category of games about hitting people. Today, we're going to dive deep into the following skills and discuss why the skill sets needed to play these very different games are a lot closer than you would think. In this video, I'll use examples from both fighting games and Madden. It's my goal to use examples that are easy enough to understand, so if you're unfamiliar with fighting games or unfamiliar with Madden, you should be able to understand the examples that I use. The first thing we're talking about today is neutral. The fighting game glossary defines neutral as the stage of a fight where neither player is blocking or getting hit by anything, and you're trying to figure out the best way to start or continue your game plan. It then goes on to be a little bit more specific, but that is the part we need. In fighting games, neutral may look like a bunch of walking, dashing, or random button presses. What is actually happening is that each player is trying to put themselves in the position to capitalize on their opponent's mistakes while not trying to make any mistakes themselves. Here's an example of neutral in a fighting game. Ground straight. Will oh. Lee make the comeback? He does have the rage. Oh, the footsies, the stare downs here. 10 seconds left. In Madden, neutral is the period before each play begins. Before the start of each play, each player generally has time to look at their opponent's formation and team personnel, or team composition. During this time, the offense will try to read the defense and figure out the best way to start or continue their game plan, and vice versa. Although the football isn't moving, each player is making decisions to put themselves in a position to force errors from their opponent. Here's what neutral looks like in Madden. I'm really, every time I go into recording a video now for YouTube, I just like, I expect to get only one stop a game. That's just. Chuflaka is making so many adjustments before the play starts, it's actually hard to see. In each game, you could be outplayed in neutral. In that case, one of you would be in the advantage state and the other one would be in the disadvantage state. If you lost neutral in a fighting game, you probably have to successfully block your opponent's string of attacks, also known as a block string. If you successfully block their attacks, the advantage may be transferred to you. If you lost neutral in Madden, your opponent has designed a play that exploits the formation or play that you have selected. To overcome this, you must make some quick adjustments to make up for the fact that you've been outplanned. Let's say you are on offense, and while you're in neutral, you pick a play that is effective against man coverage. Now you start your play and realize your opponent is in zone coverage. They have the advantage in this scenario. They won neutral because they put themselves in the best position to shut down your play. Maybe the only way you can overcome this disadvantage is if you make an adjustment and execute. Here is an example of Chu Flacco winning in neutral. What does it take for you guys to stop running your defense? I mean, I don't know. I feel like we haven't really struggled too much, and he's running it again. And even when you put Jerry Rice one-on-one, -on -one, he's not going to lose that every time. He did it again. I mean, every single play, he has ran the exact, I mean, every play. Like, you can't even make it up. All right, surely he doesn't do it again. There's no way. There's absolutely no way. I'm going to test him out right here. He's pulling his user. He did it. There's no way. He's not real. This guy is not real. Here, Chuflaka basically wins each play before they start. In neutral, he identifies he can run a play that exploits his opponent's play. His opponent fails during neutral when he selects the same play over and over again, despite the fact that he's getting exploited for it. His opponent also fails during execution during the play because he does not mitigate this weakness with his user-controlled character. The point is, each game has a phase where players make decisions to put themselves at an advantage. Generally, the only way the disadvantaged player can gain back the advantage or return to a neutral state is to outplay or out-execute their opponent. Hard reads and punishes. A read is an educated guess. Therefore, a hard read is a read that involves a big commitment if your read is incorrect, you can open yourself up to a big punishment. In fighting games, hard reads may get you killed. Look at this clip. You lose. <laughs> Ken lost here because his hard read was incorrect. He believed that the Marissa was going to try to attempt him when he got back up. He was incorrect, so he lost the round. Here is an example of a hard read succeeding. Oh my God! 
Was ist das denn? The Bowser accurately reads Joker here and delivers a hard punish. If Joker did not roll, he would have been able to KO Bowser. Here is a hard read in Madden. Here's what he's gonna do. This is actually gonna be really easy for us. We're gonna go shotgun. He's gonna run man blitz. I throw a whip route. This is a man blitz. I'm going to Tim Patrick here. Let's just clear out Hardman so that Hardman's man can't make this tackle. And I'm gonna throw the whip route. And there's the whip route. Come on, man. You made it too easy for me. I tried to tell you. During neutral, MMG realizes that his opponent was playing man coverage. Therefore, on fourth down, instead of taking an easy field goal, he puts all of his eggs in one basket. He relies on a route that works well against man coverage. Obviously, every point matters here. If MMG had guessed incorrectly here, he would have lost the ball, and he may not have been in a position to push the game into overtime. Bait and punish. We normally just call this a bait, but a bait is when you successfully trick your opponent into thinking you are going to do option A. Really, you are going to perform option B, which punishes your opponent's reaction to option A. Here, Punk is baiting and punishing his opponent in Street Fighter VI. Since Punk utilized a mechanic that most people use to engage their opponents quickly, Punk exploited his opponent's reaction using a move that didn't immediately engage his opponent, winning the round. Here is a comparison of Ken Shoryu working and the bait. Look at how similar these look. In Madden, a bait is the same thing. Here's a bait on defense in Madden. The person controlling Baker on defense makes it appear as if he's rushing the QB for a sack. He then turns around and runs into coverage. For a moment, it appears that the offensive wide receiver is going to be open but Baker quickly appears and snatches an interception. This was likely intentional. The player on defense successfully baited his opponent into throwing an interception straight at him. Here is a comparison between the successful pass and the bait interception. Look at how similar these look. Conditioning. Conditioning is when you prime your opponent to behave a certain way when they see a certain thing. This comes from a study of dogs receiving dinner. If you ring a bell before every meal, the dog will start salivating when they hear the bell because they know dinner is coming soon. But how does that translate to these games? Let's say I've been playing with my opponent for a couple of games, and whenever I use this move, I always follow it up with this move. My opponent will eventually realize he could block both of these attacks holding down and back. If I become aware that my opponent is aware of my habit, I could switch it up and use this move that he could not block holding down and back. My opponent is less likely to react to this new move because I used the other one so much. In Madden, I could do this with my formations. Let's say I always pass when I'm in shotgun, and I always run when I'm under center. My opponent will eventually learn this habit. If I realize my opponent has identified this habit, I may be able to punish his conditioning with a play action pass under center, so I can make it look like I'm going to run the ball but really pass it. Since he was expecting a run, you may be able to turn this big gamble into a touchdown. So. In my opinion, these mind games are the best parts of 1v1 games, aside from trash talk. Your mom. Madden and fighting games may be radically different games, but this educated guessing game is present and important in both. Unfortunately, I need to talk about some of the things that hold Madden back from experiencing these concepts in their purest forms. I don't want to rag on Madden too much because there's a thousand videos doing that already, but I want to address my bias. I played Madden for years, from 2013 to about 2020, and these are some of the things that drove me away from the game. 
Luckily, I found the things that I loved in Madden actually felt better in fighting games. The first thing I believe that dilutes the quality of these precious concepts is RNG. A lot of Madden interactions are up to chance. In Madden, you need to rely on getting a good animation. You can throw a ball a thousand times in this scenario. Although most of the time this might be a catch, you might just get a bad animation. Finally executing your bait perfectly only to be punished by bad RNG feels bad. Although interactions are partly decided by ratings, which we will get into, this isn't always the case. On top of this, 10 of the 11 players in the field are controlled by inconsistent AI. CPU controlled teammates sometimes make ridiculous decisions that you have almost no control of after the play has started. Your teammates on defense may not cover the very small part of the field that you've assigned to them, or maybe your offensive line just misses blocks. Do you remember when MMG made a hard read to catch a touchdown, securing crucial points that put him in a position to win in overtime? Kick in this game, right? There's just no way you return a squib, right? I shouldn't say that. That's gonna go all the way back to Kadarius Tony. Are you kidding me, you guys? This is the worst case scenario. <laughs> should return a squib. Three kick or three touchdowns. That's crazy. In here, who's 52? AJ Klein. What is this? Why did you do that? Just go tackle him. So even though he made a safe decision to put his team into overtime, and he selected a kick designed to safely trickle the clock, he still lost. Why? Did his opponent make a hard read and punish him? Did his opponent out-execute him? No, in large part, it's because MMG's CPU control teammates just decided not to play. In Madden, there are just so many inconsistent moving pieces. Imagine if your assist just didn't work 10% of the time in Marvel vs. Capcom. A problem like this could ruin a combo and you could lose the game. Madden players have to deal with problems like this constantly. Madden is riddled with the same glitches and bugs every single year. We've talked about this one now for years. Vince Gonzo on Twitter put this clip up. You can see the ball floating around, players searching for animations that aren't there, trying to pick up a ball that they can't get to, and what a mess. What an embarrassment. Although some characters may have some attacks that integrate RNG, 99% of the time, an attack is the same every single time you use it. If I hop onto this game and spam punch, the punch will be the same every single time. Terry will not randomly kick when I tell him to punch. Ratings determine how good each player on the team is. If your speed rating is higher than your opponent's speed rating, you should be able to consistently outrun your opponent. In most modes, like normal head-to-head, -head, it adds a little bit of depth and is similar to fighting games which have characters with varying strengths and weaknesses. Of course, it's cool that each team has its own strengths and weaknesses. If I'm facing a quarterback with high speed, like Lamar Jackson, I must game plan around that. The problem comes when we talk about how it relates to Ultimate Team and Madden's only official competitive circuit. Ultimate Team is a gotcha mode where you assemble your team using players obtained from packs and the game's online market. Players are expected to either shell out hundreds of dollars. I'm spending $1,000 on Madden 24 packs to see how many great pulls we can get and see if it is worth it. Quick hint, it's 100% not. This is a very stupid idea. We already have a $1,000 lineup on day one. There's a good chance this is one of the very best teams on planet Earth right now. Every game we play, we definitely have a massive advantage. 86 overall, the team's about 60. Undeserved, bro. Do this, bro. My team is way more expensive than this, bro. So we have a Madden 24 pack opening. 106,000 points. It's a little less than a thousand dollars. Hopefully, this builds us a mutt team. If it doesn't, I'm gonna be really upset. If I have to actually put more money into this, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be really pissed. One thousand dollars to spend on Madden 24 pack. Need some coins for that God Squad you've always wanted? For the cheapest coins anywhere, check out MMOEXP.com and use code ZERK for 5% off your order. Link is in the description. Or play for hours every single day to be able to afford a competitive team. On top of that, the best cards in the game are usually the most expensive. Unlike other gotchas, Madden Ultimate Team has a very unique power creep. A team that you spent $1,000 on in September will be near valueless in July. It will be totally valueless when the next Madden comes out because Ultimate Team Progress resets every single year. Imagine telling a Genshin Impact fan that you're taking their characters away every single year. If you compare the cost of Madden each year to the cost of playing a fighting game each year, 
which is still expensive due to season passes and DLC, you'll see the difference is night and day. It is very disappointing that the only official competitive circuit for Madden is centered around this gotcha mode. I believe that the Madden Championship Series might have the highest barrier to entry to almost any competitive game. Not only do you have to get good at a game with little to no transferable skills from other games, but you also need to either have a ton of money or a ton of time to have a competitive team. When you get destroyed in a fighting game, it may feel bad, but it feels so much worse when you get destroyed in Madden by someone who just outbuys you. In a fighting game, we exist on the same plane. Maybe your character is better than mine, but I could just go and select your character or buy it for a very low price. In this video, Trey Thomas talks about how a Madden Championship Series pro team is built. He explained that he expects to see a lot of the players on every single team he will face because they are meta. There's abilities that you guys are going to see tonight that all comp players are going to be using. Players that all comp players are going to be using. So you guys are going to see players like Joe Thomas out there today. Joe Thomas should probably be on everyone's team. Expect, of course, to see Plexico, Bo Plexico Burris, CeeDee Lamb, and Herman Moore on just about everybody's lineup, okay? So you guys will be seeing the Julius Peppers and this Calvin Johnson tonight. Okay, Julius Peppers and Calvin Johnson will be on everyone's field tonight. Everyone's field. I guarantee you guys do not see a team that does not have Julius Peppers, Calvin Johnson. If every team is just a carbon copy of each other, it kind of takes away from the depth of game planning that I talked about earlier. It also takes away from the fun of team building. You can't make a game plan around Lamar Jackson if every single player on the field is just as good as Lamar Jackson. Although strong characters and strong DLC characters are a problem in fighting games too, it's not anywhere near the same level. We actually have fighting games where people play identical teams, but at most, these teams cost about $15 and is available for everyone to buy. Ultimate Team is like this, but you had to pay $10 or play 10 hours for one chance to pull each fighter on screen. Imagine you're about to fight another Ryu main. Once you get into battle, you realize he actually has a limited edition DLC Ryu. Though you are both playing the same character, all of his attacks are faster and safer. It should be obvious that a cost and time prohibitive mode would have a higher barrier to entry. EA doesn't care about this barrier to entry because it makes them more money at the end of the day. The NFL EA exclusive deal isn't ending anytime soon, so I wouldn't hold your breath. In fighting games, if Street Fighter has a poor entry, we could always switch to another fighting game. That doesn't really exist for Madden. No other football game can be an NFL football game. Only Madden can. You may hear about people talking about NFL 2K5. They talk about this game because it is fantastic and it was the last time EA ever had to compete with another company to produce an NFL game. When I was a teenager, I spent my very first paycheck for my very first job on NCAA 14. I spent seven years and hundreds and thousands of hours playing Madden, but I got tired of Ultimate Team, and more importantly, I got tired of EA. If you're tired of having to devote days of your life to challenges to grind for coins to be competitive, I think you should try fighting games. Probably already developed skills that will transfer over. Instead of mindlessly grinding for coins, I think you can grind to get better at a game that respects your time. I'm going to leave you with this comment. Although I believe it is a joke, I think it actually holds a little bit of truth. Mm -hmm.